seconds or is that the interview? Uh, Welcome and thanks for joining us for this edition of Let's Talk Scents. Uh, we talk about fragrances that we've launched, things that we've learned, new updates, and special announcements. And anything else that just comes to mind. Yep, whatever pops up, we just talk about it. So uh, thanks for joining us. And before we get started, just want to introduce you to our panel here. Uh, I'm Lindsay. I'll be your host today. I'm joined by Julia, Kevin, and Cassie. Uh, would y'all like to talk a little bit about what you do here? Hi, Hi, I'm Julia. I work with the product team here at Candle Science. I help organize everything for product launches and review safety and regulatory documentation for all of our fragrances. Hey everyone, I'm Kevin. I'm with the support team. Uh, so you probably know me already and might be getting sick of me at this point. Um, but Never. I, Never. No. Well, you may not talk to me as much in the future, but you will be seeing more of me because I'm also going to be doing some more videos in the future, uh, more tutorials, business specific videos. Uh, if you have any ideas for videos that we need, shoot us an email. Yes. And I'm Cassie. I am the social media and community manager here. Uh, so many of you have probably already gotten the chance to chat with me. Um, and with a few of my other teammates, I also uh, put out a lot of the content you guys uh, see from us, tutorials, articles, other things like that. All right, so uh, again, thanks for joining us for Let's Talk Sense. Uh, and before we get started, I think we have one big announcement we wanna make. Oh, do we really? Do we? Do we? I think we do. Ready? Yes. The, the sale, sale is live! live. <laughs> Yeah, I made it work. We should have spread for a better confetti. Oh. <laughs> so, now, rehearsal. so now that we are all covered in confetti and um, it's everywhere, uh, yeah, our sale is live. So the one out sale, mm -hmm. which we do uh, twice a year, it's our fall uh, fall one out sale. All one ounce fragrances are 99 cents, um, limit one per fragrance. And that is going on now until Friday at midnight Eastern Standard Time. So. Definitely go ahead and get on the website, pick out what you want, and get that order placed before supplies run out. Um, all right, so I uh, got a little messed up there with the confetti. It, it <laughs> scrolled my screen. It's a little bit messier than I anticipated. I well, managed to not get any in my tea, though, so we're good. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't get any in mine either. <laughs> All right, so uh, so anyway, our fall sample sale is happening right now, um, and there's a lot of benefits to ordering uh, your one ounces during the sale. Kevin, you wanna? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it obviously, it's a great time to to test out our new fragrances, uh, as well as any others that have uh, that you've had your eyes on in the, in the past. Um, they're all 99 cents, so you really can't go wrong testing them out at this point. Uh, if you need some help narrowing down the list, uh, be sure to check out our new fragrance finder tool. Uh, it's on our website. You can use it to narrow by category, by season, even by note profile. Uh, so if you have, I think you may have a hole in your, your inventory that you need to fill a, a specific type of fragrance, the fragrance finder tool is excellent for that. Mm -hmm. And um, what about, uh, Cassie, you want to talk about the, the social elements of the sale? Oh, yeah. We know playing with new scents is always really fun. So definitely yes. make sure if you do any unboxing videos, uh, do any photos on Instagram, Facebook of posting the new scents you got, definitely make sure to tag us uh, and use the Candle Science hashtag so we can find them and then share them on our stories. All right. So, again, one out sale happening now through Friday uh, at midnight Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so that is our first big announcement, but wait, there's more. Uh, Julia, do you, would you like to uh, make the announcement for our second? Um, sure. Candle Science is now 100% phthalate free. <laughs> okay, that's definitely going wow. in the tea. <laughs> okay, that was amazing, and I kind of want to so, do it uh, again. We're overloaded with confetti now. Phthalates are ingredients that are in some of our older fragrances, and but there's been a lot of research done over the last 10 years. Um, about the health effects of phthalates. So uh, we decided not to launch any new fragrances that contain phthalates, and you, our customers, also asked for us to provide phthalate-free versions of your favorites. So we worked really hard to revise the fragrances so they're now phthalate-free, so you and your customers can enjoy. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, fun fun and silly confetti, and it's all over all of it's, us. It's in your hair a little bit, too. <laughs> wow. Um, so all of that silliness aside, this was a really, uh, really a labor of love. This project's been going on for years. There is a full article about it on our website, which you should check out. We've been um, working on this as long as I've worked here. We've been working on this longer than I think I've worked here. Wow. So uh, definitely, you know, this was something that was very important to us, and we um, believe that it's been very important to our customers, you, and we appreciate any feedback that you have on that. Um, 
But yeah, super exciting that we're we are now 100% phthalate free on our fragrances. Um, and along the lines of that revision project, we uh, have three fragrances that were recently revised. And uh, Julia, you want to tell us a little bit about that from the product development side? Yes, one of them is Hansel and Gretel's House. This is a holiday favorite that's a perfect blend of sweet, spice, um, gingerbread. It's now phthalate free and it's soap safe. So it's a great addition to body care lines. Mm -hmm. Another fragrance that's now phthalate free is Mistletoe. This is a staple for a lot of people year round and it's the perfect scent for getting anyone in the holiday mood. Um, it's just really fresh pine scent. Um, and our last revision for the fall was our red ginger saffron. And Love this it. is a super mm -hmm. intriguing, really realistic ginger scent. So if you're looking for an alternative to the pumpkins or the cinnamon spice fragrances for the fall, we think you'll really like red ginger saffron. I love it. It's very unique. Yeah, if you haven't it tried it, mm -hmm. definitely pick one up during the sale. It's it's a very unique fragrance. May not be for everyone, but it's it's very unique. So, and especially if these are fragrances that you do have in your line, you haven't tried them yet, pick up a sample, a 99 cent one ounce during our sale and make sure that, um, that you love it as much as we do, but we think you will. Um, so those are our three revision fragrances. We also have six brand new fragrances to our line. These are all very unique. We don't have anything else like them. Um, and so the first one, I'd like to uh, pass it to Kevin because I believe this is your favorite, uh, it, Dolce de Leche. It is my favorite, mm. Dolce de Leche. I'm a sucker for for sweet fragrances, especially the bakery inspired fragrances. Mm -hmm. um, I have a friend that, that doesn't. I have a friend that, that will not burn any any candles that make him want to eat something. So he would definitely avoid this one. I mean, it is it's butter, it's vanilla, you know, it's it's caramel. It's it's a very very just decadent uh, food type fragrance. It's Gourmand is the word I'm looking for because it, it is it's just it's truly decadent. It's very very good um, We have one here that we made uh, this is with our Avery wheat prints label um, You can pick this up through Avery uh, We this we we did it with Dolce de Leche as the name um, But we did come up with some other names for this one. It's 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 you know It can be waffle cone was one. I think my favorite alternative name that we came up with That's my favorite. That one. Yeah, I think you were responsible for that one uh, Caramel Delight, uh, Ice Cream Shop. It's just, it, you could call this Ooh, one a lot of a lot of different names here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can mix up the brand in with the labels through Avery. Uh, quick disclaimer on this one though, it is very, very thick. I think it's the thickest fragrance oil that I've ever worked with. Uh, so it can have some solubility issues if, if you don't add it at a high enough fragrance. So we highly recommend adding this one at least at 185 uh, to avoid any fragrance separation from the wax. Um, but definitely give it a try. It's really good. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you like caramelized pralines or caramel popcorn or any of those type fragrances, you're going to love Dolce de Leche. It'll make you hungry, though. It absolutely will. <laughs> it's super delicious smelling. It Absolutely. Uh, and so on that note, the label, like you mentioned, uh, you can get from Avery.com, but mm -hmm. also included in all of the orders during the sale, you're going to get a, a card, a coupon for 25% off your Avery order. So if you have not ordered from Avery, if you just want to try it out, that's a great way to, to sample out some different label stocks. Um, and also we, uh, in our behind the scents article, which is going to be linked uh, somewhere on this thread, um, you can check out the label design, see them more up close and personal, um, and get some great ideas for how to market these in your line. Uh, so next we're going to go from uh, a completely different fragrance. It's, it's definitely more um, herbal and fresh, uh, Rosemary Sage. Uh, Julia, I think this one's your favorite. Yes, I love Rosemary Sage. It's a super herbal, camphoraceous blend of Rosemary Sage and Pine. Um, it's soap safe, so it's great for so um, kitchen soaps and washroom mm -hmm. items, like I think it would be great in a sugar scrub mm -hmm. and also uh, body lotions as well. Um, during our cold process soap testing, we did not experience any acceleration or uh, separation. So we think this will be a great option for the cold process soap makers out there. Um, Rosemary Sage is also reed diffuser compatible. So it'll be great for infusing this really herbal, green, fresh scent throughout any room. Um, some people get more of the pine notes in this scent, so it can be more Christmassy to some people, or it can just be fresh and green, so it's great for any time of the year. And if you did want it for the holidays, you could absolutely mix it and heighten that that pine note Ooh, to it, too. I think yes. it would work really well with Fraser fir, uh, blue spruce, white birch. Any of those, I think, would mix really well with the rosemary sage. Great blending options. Yeah. And speaking of uh, fragrance blending options, we have a list of some customer contributions as well as some of our own uh, on our website. I believe it's in the learning section. Yep. Some really cool combinations to try. So check that out if you haven't before. 
Uh, we do recommend mixing these oils and making your own custom combination. Yep. So definitely take a look at that article. Um, so now we're going to transition to a more, um, I think it's more of a non-traditional uh, fall and holiday fragrance, uh, and this is White Current. All right, so White Current is my personal favorite of this launch. Um, it's a little sweet, it's a little tart, it's ozonic, it really feels um, super, super modern. Um, and I really like it because it's a nice alternative to like just the heavy, like kind of pumpkin spice fragrances, um, you know, just the bakery scents. I'm not a super huge fan of those. Uh, so I really like White Current, um, and it feels seasonal any season of the year, I think, because uh, yeah. it, just, yeah. it just has that quality that makes it uh, really special. And I made some candles with this scent this weekend, and my house smells so good right now. Um, and here's one we made. Break the confetti off. Um, so this is another Avery We Print label that you can see uh, that we created. Really like that one. And that one's actually a clear label. Right. Yeah, it's the so clear. that's that's not white lettering. That's that's the color of the wax shining through. Yeah, it's clear, glossy label, and then we just colored everything red and left the uh, text white. Yeah. So if you were to dye the wax, you could have a different color coming through on that yeah. label. I love the simplicity of that design. It's just very bold. It's very trendy right now. It I just is. think that's like you know. Yeah, you just want to pick it up. Yeah, you just want to you just want to touch it. Um, all right, so now on to uh, a more spicy addition to your to your fall line, uh, peppercorn pomander, which is a really interesting name. It it is uh, peppercorn pomander, pomander peppercorn. I, I keep going back and forth on on which one I'm calling it. it it's <laughs> it's a very very unique fragrance. Uh, it's unlike anything else that we currently carry. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, if you look at the essential oils alone, the orange, black pepper, clove, we don't have any other oils that have those three essentials in them. Um, it's it's a citrus blend at its heart, uh, but the the spicy notes, the clove and the black pepper, really give it a unique twist. I think the closest existing fragrance we have is wassail, um, but wassail is a little bit more fruity. Mm -hmm. It has some apple accord to it. That's it's smoother. That, it is. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. I think of of all the fragrances we've carried in the past, the closest would be our previous smoke and odor eliminator, uh, which we have. Well, that's gotten, interesting. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's interesting that it, it worked out that way. Uh, we did not intend for that to happen, but we have had some people reach out that are disappointed in that smoke and odor eliminator. Uh, we did replace it with a new fresh linen smoke and odor eliminator, but we have some customers that really like the aroma of the previous version. And this one is really close to that. Uh, you can get closer by mixing. I think Juniper Breeze and Red Hot Cinnamon together mm -hmm. create a very, very similar profile to that previous yeah. Smoke and Odor Eliminator. But if you're looking for an out of the bottle single fragrance that might could replace that one, the Palmander Peppercorn is an excellent choice for that. Um, we did another candle here as well through Avery again. This one is really classy. I like it a lot. Let me make sure you can see that there. Um, this one is just our black Libby tumbler with the black lid. And we did this on a metallic label. So that's a silver metallic label with black ink over top. Can we show, show that to them? We love this label. Yeah. yeah. This I is, love that whole this concept. Yeah. Yeah. This, 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 whole, this whole design is my favorite by far. Go ahead. Can you turn it a little bit? There you go. I just I love the simplicity of it. It's really elegant with that metallic label, and anything just black on black is tends to be my favorite. So I'm a big fan of, of this layout. Um, super I've classic. also heard this scent called an autumnal volcano. Ooh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Yeah, because it has that it's just that fruitiness of, yeah. from that, that citrus appeal. It's really juicy, like that it popular is. volcano fragrance yeah. that you see in a lot of stores. Absolutely, but with a fall twist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. clove. Interesting. Yeah. So that one's definitely one to check out uh, if you are looking for a, a different seasonal fragrance. If you have your pumpkin and your apple squared away and you just want something a little bit different, try the, the palmander peppercorn. It's it's unlike anything else you're currently carrying. So one yeah. thing I wanted to mention was you were talking about the differences between the old smoke and odor and the new smoke and odor. Right. The, the aroma is completely different. But yes, talk about the, well, I think Julia should maybe talk about the <laughs> technology behind the new smoke and odor eliminator right. and just how well it works compared to our old version. Yeah, we definitely tested our new fresh linen odor eliminator against a lot of other fragrances, and it did cover mal odors or we tested some real bad <laughs> smells very specific the, there's a great smell. article yes. on our site if you would like more details yeah, including a photo evidence <laughs> yes we'll just leave it at that so we tested it against really bad smells and our new fresh linen odor eliminator does cover and eliminate smells better than any other candle that we've tested. It absolutely does, but it does smell. The aroma is different than the, the original version. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to replicate that aroma, I would try the peppercorn pomander for that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good point. Um, 
And so, uh, you know, that is definitely a more unique uh, addition to a line, the peppercorn pomander, uh, to right. your product line. Uh, for a more traditional, nostalgic uh, holiday fragrance, I think uh, this next one is really going to get you uh, get you excited for uh, the season. And so, Julia, you want to talk about this one? Yeah. Um, peppermint mocha is super delicious smelling. It reminds me of an Andy's mint or a York peppermint patty, yep. one of those favorite mint chocolates. Um, Andrea reviewed the fragrance and she thinks it smells like a peppermint white chocolate mocha and I totally agree. Yep. I'm definitely one of those people who waits for all the pumpkin spice lattes to get out of the way so we can hurry up and have our peppermint mochas. Yes. Me too. Throw I know. Hey, the PSL. hey, the I'm pumpkin spice lovers are giving me the stink eye right now. <laughs> so yeah, but peppermint mocha, it's a great blend of mint, chocolate, and a little bit of coffee. I think if you want to add a, like, pump up the coffee note, it would be great to blend with our fresh coffee as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or um, maybe even hazelnut coffee. Ooh. ooh. If you wanted to keep it as sweet as possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Both of those would mix really well. All sounds delicious. And peppermint mocha is soap safe, so you can make really scrumptious uh, body scrubs and soaps and lotions. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and we also made our peppermint mocha latte and we we added some confetti to it yeah we did those, yeah those toppings in addition to the toppings <laughs> this looks good enough to eat but don't and if you're interested <laughs> in this design then check it out in our learning section and this so. tutorial for the this project is live on the site right yes, yes we'll, okay. we'll put the link in the comments below yeah so you can learn and you can exactly also see it right there too yep um, awesome. Well, that one definitely got me in, in the mood for, I mean, I, you can't do away with my pumpkin spice lattes, but I'm, I'm still excited about the holiday season. Um, now for a more masculine addition to your candle line for fall and uh, the holiday season, uh, we have Tonka and Oud. Kevin. Which I get to talk about that one because I'm, I'm the guy. Because you're the screen, man and right? it's masculine Tonka and, and it only feels right. We've been calling it Tonka and Dude in the customer or, service or department. Or just Tonka Dude. Tonka or just dude. Tonka Dude. Yeah, it's absolutely the most masculine of the group. It's really the only one in here that I would classify as masculine. Mm -hmm. um, it, and I had to do a little research on this one. I must admit, I didn't know what Oud was. Uh, so I had to look it up. So oud is, it's a it's agar wood, but the, that agar wood by itself does not have an aroma to it. It is odorless. But there's a fungus that grows on it, which produces, um, you know, once that sets in, it produces an aromatic resin. And that resin can then be distilled, and it has a really nice earthy fragrance to it. Uh, so it's sought after in the fragrance industry. It's, it's becoming very popular these days, uh, and it comes out really well in this fragrance. Uh, it has a very uh, powdery top note to it, so it has a clean kind of appeal uh, when you first smell it out of the bottle. But especially in the wax, those woodsy, earthy bottom notes really come through. You know, it's heavy on the oud, uh, fur as well, and you could you could mix it. I may end up mixing it myself. Uh, the, the powdery notes make it very clean, but I think I want to high highlight the woodsy notes of it. So I might mix it with like say sandalwood hmm. or um, if you want to go a little more festive with it, you could do white birch or, or uh, Fraser fir or something like that to bring out the, the pine. Uh, it could absolutely be an excellent Christmas fragrance if you did mix it that way. Um, but it's, it's just a very, very nice fragrance. Absolutely could use it by itself, uh, but it could be an excellent mixer as well. You're talking about oud and what it is. I think I like the terminology aromatic resin much better than I like mold. <laughs> yeah, mold or fungus. <laughs> yeah. a little better. An aromatic yeah. resin fragrance. Yes, it <laughs> sounds a lot better, but I wanted to give the background because a lot of people out there that. might not know what oud is. Well, we are the scientists. You Indeed, need to know the we scientific, are. You know, terminology. The science and candle science. <laughs> it's a great everyday fragrance for like, any room. It is, especially if you leave it the way it is. Uh, it's because because of that powdery top note, it's very mm -hmm. clean. So it has a nice earthy woodsiness to it, but it's very clean as well. So it could be an excellent everyday fragrance. One that if you just want, you might want your house to smell like that just year round. It's it's that mm -hmm. type of fragrance. Definitely. Um, and so if you want to learn more about these fragrances, and again, we have uh, three revisions. We had Hansel and Gretel's house. Um, red ginger saffron yep. and mistletoe. Correct. Wow, I just did that off the top of my head. And uh, the six brand new fragrances to our line, which are Dolce de Leche, Rosemary Sage, White Currant, Peppercorn Pomander, Peppermint Mocha, and Tonka and Oud. Uh, if you want to find out more about Tonka all these dude. fragrances, <laughs> Tonka and Dude, if you want to find out more about these fragrances, check out our Behind the Scents article. Uh, it was in the email for the one ounce sale. It's also linked uh, somewhere below in the comments. Uh, there's a lot of information, mood boards, labeling ideas, uh, close-up photos of all of the, mm -hmm. the the sample products that we've made to showcase these fragrances. All of that's on there. I think that'll be really helpful uh, in marketing these, you know, 
adding them to your line and coming up with different ways to market them, different Absolutely. concepts. I'd love to hear the different names that people come up with too. Oh yeah, please share those. If you come up with some cool names, uh, we would love to hear uh, what you're calling these sense. Yeah, you know, certainly. Because a lot of them are really complex and they have they have a variety of notes in them. You, you could come up with, with a you know, variety of names to market these. Definitely. Uh, well, speaking of uh, of our viewers, do we uh, have any questions that have come up on yeah, social? We Cassie? do have some questions. Um, so we have a, a few questions just asking about all the jars and the lids. Um, and so, yeah, all of these jars and lids you can get um, on CandleScience.com. They're all available. Uh, the labels we created with Avery WePrint. Um, so if you place an order this week, you are going to be receiving a card for 25% off your Avery WePrint orders. So make sure you look around for those in the boxes because they can get lost sometimes. I'm sorry, I'm um, laughing because that's so hard to say. I constantly say Avery WePrint. <laughs> it's, it's really hard for me to say. It takes a little practice. It does. I have to say it on the phone a lot and I mess it up a lot. <laughs> uh, so we have one question from Katie. Uh, have you considered adding... Um, info about a fragrance being really viscous or thick on um, the product page for each scent. That is an excellent question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we currently do have a disclaimer on the Dolce de Leche. We previously had it on Very Vanilla as well. Uh, so for those really thick ones that tend to be problematic, we do put a, a disclaimer on the site. But I think having a, some sort of scale in the product mm -hmm. details is a great idea. Uh, that's, you know, as we continue using these fragrances and then finding out, you know, different ways to overcome some specific issues, I think that's a great idea. Uh, yeah, there, I think we could expand on that as well. Other physical properties that may come up. Um, I think that's a fantastic idea and I will float that up. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. You have any other questions? Um, let's keep going. Okay. Um, all right, so I think uh, we were gonna talk about, oh, Cassie, you had, a, you had an, another oh, announcement. Yeah, that's right. So um, a lot of you have been pretty curious about some upcoming uh, products that we're gonna launch and have had some questions mm -hmm. about that. So I did manage to convince uh, the powers that be to give you a little sneak peek of a couple upcoming things. So if we can get a drum roll maybe, no more confetti. We have a snazzy new silver electroplated reed diffuser bottle and this great clear rectangle reed diffuser bottle and either a gold or silver collar. So if you were thinking about adding reed diffusers to your line, this is a sign from the universe. You might want to try now. They're really fun and really easy. Um, the electric plated reed diffuser bottle, um, the electric plated glass is made by electrically depositing the metal onto the glass's surface so it'll never rub or chip off. So the box that you receive um, these reed diffuser bottles in, you can repackage them back into that same box and ship them to your customers without any worry about them scratching at all. Now so we did test that durability. Yeah. Yes, right? yeah. we this did. Is, we really tried to scratch these guys. And, we uh, rubbed it very hard against cardboard. It wasn't it, happening. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's important to note that it's electroplated and not just painted because, right. you know, it's sometimes it's hard to tell it's the difference, good. but it's, yeah. it's definitely a, a different process, completely different process different uh, strength in the coating. Yeah, it creates yes. a completely different durability, which I I'm excited about. Yeah. So if you're interested in making reed diffusers or have any questions about it, we have a new tutorial about reed diffusers with some great tips and best practices. And they're really easy and really fun. They're really easy. If you're used mm -hmm. to making candles or soaps, reed diffusers are a breeze. They're almost too easy. I made a batch over last year at the holidays, and mm -hmm. I, I like kind of freaked out a little mm -hmm. bit because I thought I have to be doing this wrong. There's no way it's this easy. I'm but, done yeah. already. But it is. In fact, I think you gave me one of those. <laughs> I think I might have called you and said, "What am I doing?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and we've had I've had calls from customers that that think it's they're missing a step. They're they're convinced yeah. they're missing a step because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it really is that simple. Yeah. So, um, well, speaking of questions and, and, and uh, you know, trying to get in touch with our customers, do we have any more questions from uh, any, any viewers of our Facebook Live? Uh, let's see. Not too many other questions. I see lots of comments, but. Yeah, yes. lots of comments. Um, so, yeah, if you have questions, definitely make sure to ask us so that we can uh, get to them right here. Absolutely. Um, so, um, let's see. So one of the questions I know that we get a lot of is how do we uh, stay on top of everything during this busy holiday season? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. By so, the seat of our pants. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, well, first of all, I think uh, the, the most important advice that, that I could give is to be prepared, right? I mean, you know, okay. think ahead. 
uh, sort of get your get organized, get your ducks in a row. Um, you know, it's a great motto uh, of the Girl Scouts to be prepared, and that is also applicable to all of us makers, especially during this holiday season. Um, I see a lot of people scrambling at the last minute, and you know, we hear a lot of horror stories from customers who are stressed out. Uh, and really upset because they've forgotten something and you know we try to do the best we can to help accommodate them but one of the ways you can avoid that sort of stress is to uh, plan your supply orders carefully try to make sure you have everything in your cart in your order before you uh, hit order because yeah. that way you don't have to worry about that adding on that last minute thing and increasing your shipping costs and um, you know having to place multiple orders and losing the, the efficiencies of ordering more in bulk right. you know especially if, if you're ordering multiple cases of wax you know mm -hmm. you might trip over to the next shipping discount or, or to UPS the next 100 weight. UPS 100 weight, you know, for orders of 200 pounds or more. Absolutely. I mean, there's all sorts of discounts that you can get if you just sit down and carefully plan out what you think you're going to need for the season and, uh, you know, plan ahead and, and look at our, our website for the volume discounts. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're right on the edge of getting a, a discount on fragrance because you can go up a size, you know, think about that. You might want to just go ahead and add that on so that you're not in a bind later if you, you know, underproduce. Absolutely. Um, and another big thing that you want to think about is taking into account cure times. Right. Um, in our testing, and we do a lot of testing on our fragrances, on our waxes, wicks, everything, um, we do a two-week cure time before we test anything. And that is what we recommend, and that is what we recommend to you to take into account when you're planning for your next event or craft fair or customer order. Uh, build in that two week cure time right. and that way, um, you know, your candles are gonna be the best they can be and you know, you're not gonna get the negative feedback about maybe the strength not being as much sure. as, as you think. Um, keep in mind too, a lot of carriers will suspend guarantees during the holidays as well. That's true. Uh, so things start to get busy, uh, whereas USPS does not guarantee transit times year round, but companies like UPS do. Uh, but come holiday season, they suspend that guarantee. Yes. Uh, so you may want to order even further in advance than you normally would. Right. Account for the cure time, account for possible delays, and you know, get your get your materials in advance. Right, right. and and we're gonna be able to, we're, we are always gonna stand by our 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time shipping cutoff, 4 p.m. also for the Western West Coast. Um, we're gonna stand by that. Your order is gonna go out the door, but once we turn it over to the carrier, if they've discontinued their shipping guarantee, there's really nothing that that we can do to help you get it any faster. So definitely take that into account. We're doing Absolutely. all we can to make sure you get your order in perfect condition and perfectly on time. Um, so, you know, you gotta you gotta plan ahead and do the same. It's gonna make this holiday season go so much better, trust yes. me. Um, now from a marketing uh, perspective, uh, Cassie, do you have any tips for like what customers can do to sort of gear up for the holiday season? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my main one is if you're not already promoting your fall scents, your fall collection, get on that now mm -hmm. because it is still hot. People want it to be fall. They want to break out their scarves. They want to get their pumpkin spice latte and shower themselves in pumpkins everywhere. <laughs> um, so take advantage of, of that. Uh, you know, put, make some autumn aesthetic mood boards. Take some great cozy uh, images, um, and you can really get a jump on promoting your fall collection. Um, the other thing is, I know we've mentioned it a lot, but definitely check out our Behind the Sense article because yes. that has a lot of really good ideas just for, just just moods you want to present. The mood boards, the branding ideas, the labels, all of that can be found there. So definitely check that out if you have not already. A lot of inspiration there. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, another cool thing to check out is going to be our Fragrance by State tool. Oh, so I love that, that tool. Yeah, isn't it That's, cool? It's a lot of fun. It's and it really changes. Fun to it updates. Around. It updates frequently too. Yeah. So you, so Every definitely. month, I think. It does, mm -hmm. so go back and check it out. You'd be surprised how it, it rotates through the season. Yeah, um, and you can really see the most popular and trending scents uh, in your state or in neighboring states. So if you're visiting another state for a craft fair or something like that, you can really get an idea of what's trending, what people are buying, what everyone wants to smell this holiday season. Oh, that's a very good point, because what sells well in North Carolina may not sell as well right. in yeah. Florida. Right. I know that And it I is really that different firsthand. state to state. Yeah, so it is. It's fun to just spend some time clicking around. It well, is. Absolutely. Speaking of craft fairs, uh, Kevin, you have spent a lot of time uh, doing craft fairs as an entrepreneur in the candle I, making. I have. I uh, have. Do you have any, any tips for customers who might be either just starting out on the craft fair, maybe even some customers who have, have you know, made that leap but want to improve on their processes? I absolutely do. You know, before taking this job, my wife and I did craft shows full time for about two years. Uh, so there are a lot of things that I wish somebody had told me in the beginning. Uh, and back to your point, Lindsay, about being prepared. Uh, I think that would be my first tip is prepare yourself in advance. If you've never done a show before, 
pop open your tent, build your display, do it in your front yard if you have to. Uh, your neighbors might think you're crazy, but it's absolutely worth the time to set it up and visualize the whole thing, see how things are moving. Um, you know, if, I went through the process of making myself really nice display tables, uh, only to realize at my first show that they needed some sort of grip on top because my know. candles slid all over the place. Um, so that's the kind of thing you can avoid if, if you pop it up and, and get it all ready in advance and just know what you're working with. Um, figure out your signage, look at your tablecloths. A lot of promoters do require you to have tablecloths that go all the way to the ground. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that my first time either. Um, <laughs> I, I lucked out and they were lenient, but that that is a common, a common requirement. Uh, if it's a local event, go to the site and check it out. Walk around, find your spot, get an idea for the spacing, figure out how you're going to load in, load out. Some promoters are better than others in terms of facilitating that traffic uh, and providing parking. So look into that. You know, look into how you can, you know, how you can facilitate that the day of. Because if you don't, if you don't prepare for it, you're going to run into a, a whole host of issues once you get there day of. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them start really early too, so you don't want to be trying to figure this out first thing in the morning. Um, no, I don't want to figure anything no. out first thing in the no, morning. No, no. A lot of these start at nine o'clock, so you may need to. If you if it's not nearby, you're gonna to have to drive there, mm -hmm. and then you know you're loading up. You're loading in at seven, eight o'clock, and you know you're barely caffeinated at that point. So be prepared before you get there. Um, also, have a sun strategy because us candle makers have a very unique issue that other crafters don't have to deal with, and that's the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, you not only if it's hot do you have to deal with them melting, but you're also going to have to deal with them shifting in the UV light. Some fragrance oils, you know, driftwood, brandied pear, watermelon, they're notorious for shifting colors when they get into UV light. Uh, so map out the sun if you can, figure out which way you're going to be facing, where the sun's going to be and have a strategy for it. Buy yourself an awning, buy partial sides for your tent that may help to block out that light and have a rearrangement strategy because it's gonna move. You may be perfect in the morning and come afternoon, you're gonna have to shift your tables around to avoid that sunlight. So be prepared. If possible, when you're choosing your space, uh, assuming you're in the United States, uh, don't face south if possible. Your south facing spots are gonna be by far the sunniest. So if you have a choice, which obviously you don't always have a choice, but if you do, try to face north or even east and west, then you only have to deal with it for a portion of the day. The south space facing spots are the worst. Um, next tip, be friendly to everybody, especially your neighbors. Um, it can be hard when you first do a show to open up and talk to the people around you. It can be intimidating, especially if you see them as a competitor, but go ahead and introduce yourself early. Open that dialogue. You never know when you're gonna need something. Um, maybe they have a side that's down, that's blocking your view, or maybe you need to borrow something that you forgot to bring. Having that open dialogue in the beginning is going to go a long way and help you to, to overcome some things that may come up. And maybe they're veteran craft show people that can give you some better tips than I'm giving you now. You know, it, it never hurts to have that open dialogue. And that goes for the promoters as well. You know, know your promoters, introduce yourself, be nice, follow the rules. You never know when something may come up that you need to ask for. Um, maybe it's a better spot. Maybe, you know, it, it, who knows? It could be anything. I've been in shows that I got stuck in a terrible position. Uh, the first day. Saturday, mm -hmm. I tanked completely, no traffic, but I saw that someone didn't show. They had a better spot. I asked the promoter. They let me pick up my tent and move it over. Completely saved my weekend. So Great. keep that in mind. If they, if the promoter didn't know me and know that I was a nice person, they may have just said, no, deal with it. So having that open dialogue with your neighbors and the promoters goes a long way. Uh, a couple things to remember to bring. You know, you have your products, you have your tables, you have your tent, you thought about all that. You may not have thought about a few things. Uh, one is a credit card reader. Ooh. They're really easy to get. Usually you don't have to pay for them up front. You can get Square, it's free. You pay a percentage, but you don't have to buy it up front. Um, PayPal has them, I think Etsy has one. There, There's a variety that you can choose from, but you gotta take credit cards. The days of only paying cash at craft shows is over. Most people bring credit cards. I did one show without a card reader and I will never do it again. Um, but for those cash people do bring change. Uh, people will use big bills for a small candle. They don't always come prepared with small bills. So make sure that you have some change on hand. Uh, a good tip too, round for your tax. You do have to ch you charge tax. You, you, know, you have to be accountable for that, but you can round it and, and absorb a little bit. You know, if it's gonna be seventy in tax, round it down to a dollar, absorb that last bit. That way you don't have to worry about the coins. Um, tarps, you're gonna deal with rain. 
So bring tarps, bring tarps, uh, bring shims for your table. I've dealt with a lot of unlevel ground. You're not always going to be on a nice smooth sidewalk. So bring shims so you can balance out your tables and you won't have product sh you know, sliding you around. Your slide in yeah. <laughs> I have absolutely been through that. It will happen. So I had one that was half concrete and half grass behind it. So you you have to you know be be prepared for that. Bring shims, maybe even a couple of small two by fours to help to help you know get past any any issues with the landscape that you may have to deal with. Fold in chairs, fans, keep yourself cool. Make sure you have a place to sit. Um, and there's a couple of essentials: duct tape, clamps, uh, multi tool. Bring yourself a Leatherman style multi tool because you never know when something's gonna break. I in always the forget of your a shell. screwdriver. That's, That's like what I'm the saying. thing I never have. There's <laughs> when need. you don't know what's gonna happen. You might need a screwdriver. You might need, you know need to file something down. I had uh, one of my my tent pieces broke at one point. I had a sharp edge. You need to file that down. So multi tool is a great thing to have because mm -hmm. you have a variety of tools. Um, keep that with you. Things are gonna come up. Do you always bring the same products? I I do not always bring the same products. I do have my core fragrances that I bring all the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I shift it around seasonally. Um, but in terms of the sizes, you know, my I, I, my main line is the, the Libby tumblers here, mm -hmm. um, which are, you know, if, uh, in terms of, of a price tag are a little on the high side for some people, depending on where your show is. So a lot of times I'll make small tens that I don't mm -hmm. that I don't always carry. Mm -hmm. I don't carry them on my website, but I do bring them to shows as just a small ticket item. Mm -hmm. People that, you know, only yeah. want to spend five bucks. You know, I yeah. can't, you can haggle and wheel and deal with people, but I'm not selling a tumbler for five bucks. Right. So. But then they'll fall in love with the scent and they'll just have to go and get a tumbler. Exactly <laughs> right. So you can sell those people on the smaller items. And it doesn't mean it has to be a permanent fixture within your line. You can have a, you know, have those for, you should call it a show special. I only make these tens just for this show oh. specifically. Mm -hmm. So I will do that a lot. Um, and last point, know your product. You're gonna get a lot of questions. People tend to ask more questions in person than they do when they shop on your website. So have your selling points. Don't be pushy, but know how to respond to certain questions. People are, are growing in, in the information that they want. They wanna know if it's phthalate free. They wanna know if you use an all natural wax. They're, they're gonna ask you a lot of questions that might surprise you. So know your products, uh, know your price points. You know, you're gonna run into some people that wanna haggle with you. Uh, and there's no problem with in you know giving a two for one deal something like that but know your limits and, and be prepared for it because people will ask a ton of questions and they will want a deal and the last thing you want to do is be crunching numbers on the fly so know what you can and cannot do in advance all right so we do have some questions i want to make sure we get to you um would white current and fraser fur blend well what do you guys think i think it absolutely would yeah yeah i think that would be a great blend yeah, um, I, I think they would go. Uh, I'm I'm inclined to mix Fraser fur with anything. I just I love a good pine note. So as long I mean I'm not going to do a Dolce de Leche, but it's one of those that if you have an earthy or kind of seasonal fragrance, you could almost always mix with Fraser yeah. fur. Yeah, white currant is a great fruit note mm -hmm. to add to other fragrances. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Another question. Uh, Kevin, this one is for you specifically. Specifically for me, huh? Can you explain curing and why two weeks is the sweet spot? So I can't explain exactly why. Uh, I mean, your, your fragrance and your wax continue to bind on a molecular level over time. Uh, and you can see that as evidenced by frosting. I mean, that's all mm -hmm. frosting is. Frosting is a crystal structure that grows over time. Um, and your fragrance is bound into that as well. So as it sits, you know, you are, it's, it's increasing that bind, that bond between the fragrance and the wax. And, but, you know, in terms of, of the actual chemistry of it, I don't think I'm the qualified person to explain, but I can tell you firsthand that it's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. That before I ever understood why it happened, I knew that it did happen mm -hmm. because I've rushed it and I've made candles for shows, you know, a week in advance. Um, and I've gotten feedback from people that say they're not as strong. So I, I send them a courtesy candle that's been curing for three weeks and they sing a completely different tune. Mm -hmm. So it absolutely does matter. And not just for throw. I mean, your, it's, your cure time is going to affect issues as well. As that fragrance binds to the wax over time, you're going to get less fragrance lower leaching. Um, it's going to hold up better, better over time. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to allowing for a nice long ample cure time. Nice. Um, then one more question. Julia, you can probably answer this one. Um, is there anything we can use to stop the sun from changing the color of the wax? We have a UV inhibitor. That's a great option mm -hmm. um, to add to candles if you know that they're going to be out in the sun. Um, otherwise, we do suggest trying to keep them covered, yeah. especially yeah, that's in storage. Your best bet. When Definitely. you're um, when they're at your house or your shop, then right. try to keep them out of the sunlight. 
as much as possible. That actually takes me back to another craft show tip. I used to keep all of my <laughs> stock under the tables and bins. Oh yeah. This helps with UV light. It also helped I, in the hot months, I'd put ice packs in the bins. So we mm -hmm. keep all of our stock in the bins and then we'd have sort of and throwaways, but we have our display pieces that I don't care if they turn, you know, they're there just for display. Mm -hmm. um, eventually you can close them out, give somebody a deal on, on that one that turned, but that way you know that your main sellable stock remains out of the sun. Mm -hmm. That's Ooh, a great tip. Lori has a great tip uh, for shims. Uh, she says cut PVC pipes uh, to make great shims for uh, table legs. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah, hmm. I've always done pieces of wood, but PVC yeah. would absolutely Easy work. Easy DIY option. Absolutely. So this, I love these comments. Yeah. All right, so um, so just again, we're having we're in the middle of our one out sale. Yes. Uh, it started early, early, early this morning, um, and, early. <laughs> and it'll continue until midnight on Friday. Uh, that's that's two days from today, uh, midnight Eastern time. So make sure you uh, get your samples in. Um, one more thing we want to talk about is shipping always comes up. Um, it's it's always a question that is asked of of mm -hmm. social and on uh, at our customer service department. Um, we do have some updates on shipping for this year. Uh, Julia, you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, good news and new for this year's fall sale. All available one ounce samples are, can be shipped by air. So that means Ooh. that you can pick any shipping method you want, including second day air. Uh, Lindsay, would you help explain what Flashpoint is in case anyone's oh, sure. wondering? So uh, Flashpoint of a fragrance oil is the temperature at which it would ignite if it were exposed to a stray spark or an open flame. Um, you know, it's something that we note because uh, Flashpoint is really important when you're trying to ship by air. Obviously, mm -hmm, those sure. lower Flashpoint fragrances are not able to be shipped by air. Uh, we used to show you a warning if you added one of those fragrances to your cart. Uh, but now that all of our fragrances uh, with the low Flashpoints have been discontinued or, or revised, um, there's, that's no longer a problem. What Flashpoint is not is the temperature at which you should add the fragrance to your wax. And what um, temperature should you do that? You should do that at 185 degrees Fahrenheit. For that, every fragrance? For every fragrance okay. that, that we carry, as well as fragrances by other manufacturers. If it is right. a fragrance oil and you want to add it to wax to make a candle, 185 degrees is, is what we have determined to be the best temperature um, for a multitude of reasons that you can research on our site. But that that is tried and true. Um, you know, we've seen other information floating out there and you know, it is a, our very strong feeling that 185 degrees is correct. Right. And um, now some could be added lower. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There, there's a variety yeah. of fragrance oil components, and I think a lot of the, I think a lot of the confusion comes from the fact that other components, you know, certain fragrance oils could be added lower successfully. Sure. Um, but unless you want to go through and understand every single one of your oils specifically and what temperature the, the threshold is, mm -hmm. your best bet is just to go 185 across the board. Right. It's just a um, good catch-all temperature. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And exactly. there's no downside to it. Because I already know what the next question would be, is, is your fragrance oil going to burn off at 185? No. Uh, so the cool thing about this, we have an in-house chemist, um, which is just awesome because we get to throw a lot of random projects at him and he I gets to wear his lab coat. I believe he prefers chemical engineer. Chemical engineer. Uh, he gets to, to do a lot of cool uh, experiments in the lab. He wears his lab coat. He's very, very you know authoritative about this. He follows a very specific uh, scientific method. Um, he used specialized equipment to measure uh, the fragrance lost when you hold the the wax and the fragrance uh, combination at 105, uh, 185 degrees for an hour, uh, which is just not something that you're typically going to do. No, you're it's going to cool down as soon as you put your yeah, fragrance Yeah, you're going to take away. it off at 185, add your fragrance, let it cool down to your pouring temperature, and then move on with your after day. After you but stir really well. After you stir a lot, but that's beside the point. Um, but So you're not going to do that, but if you did, um, he measured this and found that only 0.02% of the fragrance burned off. Not 2%, but 0.02%. Yeah. You're not going to, you know, you know, someone with a heightened sense of smell might be able to tell the difference, but a typical person is not. There's just no way. So that's why we recommend it. Um, you know, in our testing, it, it's, it's like you said, there's really no downside to it. Right. Um, candles have always come out well. I've personally always used 185 for every fragrance that mm -hmm. we carry, and I've never had an issue with it at all. So, Same here. Yeah, so that's that's why we recommend that. Um, you know, not to keep beating that drum, but that's that's why. Um, so, um, 
you know, on that note, we've, so again, Flashpoint, uh, low Flashpoint fragrances have been discontinued. You can ship everything by air. That's gonna, you're gonna notice that in your cart with some lower shipping prices. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe before when you added one of those fragrances, it would only be sh uh, shippable um, by, UPS by UPS ground and not, you know, the other methods. So, right. um, which could be costly if you're only buying a few small fragrance. Well, models. definitely. I saw that. I mean, we saw, you know, customers would, would write in and say, why is my shipping cost so high? Right. And <laughs> almost every time it's, Oh, they have yeah. a Flashpoint fragrance in their right. car. So. Which you think the base for UPS is around $11, $12. So if you're only mm -hmm. buying a few one ounce samples, that seems like a lot. That, that, right. That's a high shipping price for such a small item. Definitely. So, so yeah. no longer a problem. And uh, and you can thank our product development team for working really hard yeah. on revising those away. Uh, do we have any more questions? Yeah, kind of a related question. How come a finish candle isn't subject to the flashpoint restriction for air shipping? Ah, so that's a, that's a good because question. Because it is no longer concentrated. That's uh, right. Once you add it to the wax, you have diluted that. Uh, it's at, at most, you're looking at 10%. So once it's diluted in the wax, it no longer has that same flash point. Because the flash point of wax is, is super high, like mm -hmm. over 300. So yeah. once you mix it with your wax and it's diluted down, then you no longer have to worry about it. Right, awesome. So exactly. thank you, Katie, for that question. That's, That's a great good. question. Yeah, That's an excellent point. question. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Let's see here. Or interesting things yeah. that we should read. So what is the ideal pouring temperature? Oh, that's a loaded question. Yeah, I think Kevin um, should answer that. <laughs> that is entirely dependent on your wax mm -hmm. uh, and very and partly your environment as well. Um, your, your paraffin wax is generally pour hotter, 170, 180. Soy waxes traditionally have been low. Uh, 135 is the standard recommended for 464, for example. Um, but that's not set in stone. You absolutely can vary that. Some people get better results lower. I pour at 160 with 464 and I get that, a great finish. I've been hearing that a lot lately. A lot of people are pouring hotter, 160, even 165, uh, which is great. If you can get smooth tops at, at that temperature, it's fantastic because it minimizes that cool down period. Um, you're not losing fragrance during the cool down, but it does take up time. You know, I used to use the 415 and I had to add my fragrance at 185 and then wait for it to cool down to like 100. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the type of wax that you can't pour hot. 415, you have to pour when it's almost slushy, around 100. Um, you go do your taxes and come back and then pour your candles. It takes forever. <laughs> Uh, 464 though is, you know, and, and uh, 444 as well can often be poured hotter. So play around with it, you know, go by the manufacturer's recommendation I, in, initially, and then just adjust up and down to get the best results. And if you can pour hot, absolutely pour hot. Yeah, I actually pour um, around 150 is when I start pouring because mm -hmm. I'm really slow because I don't want to make a mess. And by the time I get to the last couple candles, my pour temp, my, you know, the temperature of the wax is so yeah. low that if I'm not careful, it'll just look terrible. That's okay. that's an excellent point. Another so. thing to consider because it will pour, it will cool down as you pour. So okay. if you're doing a, la a large run, you may want to start a little bit higher than you think is necessary. Mm -hmm. That way you, you're kind of in the middle ground because, you know, 464, my most recent batch of 464 have been great pouring hot. So if I'm really slow pouring and it starts to get slushy, then it's they're not going to look as good. So yeah, you, you might as well just heat it back up, start yeah. over yeah. Or, or scrap it. Which I have done as well. Yeah, <laughs> We have some recommended pouring temperatures on all of the wax pages. Mm -hmm. So that's a great starting point, And then you can go from there. Absolutely. Yeah. Any more um, questions? Yeah. Does wax ever go bad? In theory, it does. But I've never seen it happen. Um, Paraffin, correct me if I'm wrong, Julia, but paraffin, not as much in terms of uh, of a shelf life. Mm -hmm. I think they, they should last for years. Yeah, soy more so because it's a natural product, soy wax, and we do recommend using it within a year. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, I have some that have been sitting around for years and have not spoiled. It'll, it's, you know, it's essentially a food product. So it will, you'll know if it spoils. If yeah, it it'll starts, go rancid, right? Yeah, it'll go rancid. It'll have a smell. Uh, it could potentially mold if it's in a humid environment. Mm -hmm. As long as it looks and smells fine, you're fine to use it. But generally speaking, we recommend using soy wax within a year. Awesome. Great question though. Um, then what about soap bases? Uh, what temperature should soap base be when you add fragrance to it? I'm not the soap aficionado here. So maybe this isn't the right answer, but I'll go for it. Uh, soap base, I haven't noticed that it's that, um, as long as the product is fully melted, if, if you, mm. you know, if you make sure that it's all melted and there's no clumps or anything and then add your fragrance, I've had great results with it. You know, right. I don't. And this is melt, melt and pour soap. Right? Yeah, right. melt and pour soap. Oh, yeah, cold uh, process. Yeah, cold process. I know that's about. a whole different story. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I've made a lot of soap with our melt and pour bases and I've never had an issue with with it, um, doing that method, you know, making sure that it's it's fully melted, that there's no chunks left in right. it, that that you add your fragrance, stir it really well before you pour it into right. your mold or, or whatever. And you're generally using a lot less fragrance True. With, with soap than you are yeah, with candles. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else? Um, yeah, one more question. Um, can you talk about frosting and why uh, certain candles frost more than others? Absolutely. A lot of that is fragrance oil. Uh, it's not just the wax itself. It's the way that that wax is interacting with the oil. Uh, mm -hmm. And so in dyes as well, you know, certain dyes can can promote that as well. So it's, it's going to be specific to your recipe. Um, some wax batches will frost more than others too. Being a natural product, it is going to shift. You're going to see some variations between, between lots. Uh, but certain fragrance oils will cause more frosting than others. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, hey, candle scientist. Hey, hey, hey off-screen uh, camera person. Do you have a question? I, I have an awesome question from, actually, this was Christy's, Christy's question. She said she's new to candle science, referred by one of her wholesale customers. Uh, she is a candle maker. Um, I know that many of your fragrances are candle and soap safe, but mm -hmm. just wondering if there's one that, off the top of your head, you know, would make a great candle scent and a great soap scent. Do we need to repeat mm. that or was that on the audio? It's on the audio. Good, because I, I was really having so, a hard yeah. time keeping up with yeah. that whole question. Great, great okay. candle and, and soap. soap. I, there are a lot. Mm. Sea salt and orchid. Yes. <sighs> Good choice. Sorry, I love it year round. Yeah. I do not yes. care. Black sea. <laughs> Black yeah, Black, Black sea is a good one too. Driftwood. <laughs> You already had these, que oak, these oak answers. Ma oak moss and amber? Yeah. Yes. Amber He's been sitting on this question this entire show waiting I think to that ask. Is, I think that was his question. Any other suggestions over there? No, I think that's good. Okay. <laughs> Unless any others. Anybody else? Cactus flower okay. jade. Cactus flower and jade. Yes. yes. Oh, uh, peppermint and eucalyptus. Oh, yes. that's a good choice. You made a soap that with is. that last year, and it was... Lovely. Peppermint yeah. eucalyptus is great year round. Mm -hmm. I actually I changed the name on the seasons. Like for the winter, it's winter mint. Mm. And then I'll like, you know, I mean, I'll come up with other things. I used to do the same thing with Christmas hearth. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was Christmas hearth during the holidays. And it was just, you know, a generic fireplace the sure. rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's that good. You can absolutely go year round. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, any other questions or we're good? Um, yeah. If you have more questions, just feel free to drop them in there. And then we will go back and make sure to get uh, answers to them. All yeah. right. Absolutely. All right. So just to summarize, uh, our one out sale is happening now through Friday at midnight Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. on the West Coast. So make sure you get your orders in uh, by Friday. Uh, all one ounces are 99 cents until then. Um, if you're having trouble picking out which fragrances uh, you want to try, you should check out our fragrance finder. Mm -hmm. Also, our fragrance oil by state tool, look up mm -hmm. tool. It's very interesting and informative. Um, Let's see, we have three revision fragrances. We have six new fragrances. All that's on our homepage. You can go check that out. We also have our uh, Behind the Scents article that, that you should definitely go look at mm -hmm. for some marketing oh. ideas. Read uh, diffuser bottles coming later this fall. Yep, coming this fall. Read diffuser bottles, lots of confetti. Confetti everywhere. And also lots of really cool content that we don't have time to talk about on here because there's just <laughs> I think so we've much. already gone over our time. So uh, thanks for joining us. And Send us your content recommendations. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If there's anything you want to see, anything you think is missing from our site, let us know. I want to spend more time making videos, so tell me what videos I should yeah. make. Yeah, You're going to be seeing a lot more of, of Kevin and I. Yep. Yeah. So, yep. you, so let us know what you want to see. What you want to to see them uh to make or do or say and not just candles and soap making you know business related stuff mm -hmm. craft show advice marketing, marketing. social yep. media tips anything photography tips we can go all day oh yep. yeah so share all of those recommendations share your uh creations we love seeing what you come up with absolutely uh keep an eye out in your package for the one out sale uh there's going to be a 25 percent off avery, avery we print uh label <laughs> service you. You did yes. that to me. Um, so <laughs> make sure you get that out of the shipping box. Um, that's a great deal if, if you want to uh, get some really cool customized labels for your products. Very professional touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, did I forget anything? I don't think so. Okay. I think that covers well, it. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on thanks, Let's everybody. Talk Sense. Bye. Bye. <laughs>